Oh, hello, thank you. This is exciting. Oh, this is my turn. Yes. Uh, first off, I don't want to seem like a downer, but when you heard about the, the Japanese voice actress for Boma, how did, how did that make you feel? Hiromi Siru, and I tell you what, it's interesting because like there have been other voice actors that I guess passed before I recorded the role, like Anna and Shimonetta, I know that voice actors passed. Um, but it's different when you work on a show like Dragon Ball. I've been working on it for over a decade now, which is crazy to me. So that's all of those years of hearing Hiromi Suru's voice. And I remember being really upset because I never got the chance to meet her. And so we spent so much time working on the same character and everything. I really would have loved to have been able to sit her down and be like, Tell me all about it. Give me the tea. Tell me all about how you feel about Bulma. This is how I feel about it. See if we're on the same page. Um, so it really hit me hard, and it hit me really hard when I went in for, um, I forget what game it was that we were recording at the time, but we went in for a game. And um, and she it, she was still there, and it was after she'd passed, and I was like, oh, it sucks because you hear that voice, and that's that same voice you're accustomed to hearing for a decade, and now it's gone. Now, I will say that Aya Hisakawa, who now plays Bulma, is an, a super accomplished seiyu. She's fantastic. She's done all, we've voiced a lot of the same characters. So I'm hoping that I will get to meet her at some point. Um, but yeah, it was it was really hardcore. I, did, I wasn't expecting to actually cry, you know, the first time I heard her after I knew she had passed, because we'd never actually met. But you, you have this kindred relationship, this kindred spirit with uh, pretty much anybody who's played that character. Um, I'm sure that there are people in the lady in Germany or in Italy that's like, yeah, I wonder what it's like. I'd love to talk to Monica Rial. And I wish we could all get together and have like a party, like a Bulma party, it'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, it really affected me more than I thought it would. But I think that that's only natural when you're so in tune with a character like that. Um, I did find it interesting and I, this is just my theory. It is not in any way like legit, but I did notice that Aya Hisakawa's voice is just a little bit higher and a little bit clearer than Hiromi's. Hiromi's was a little fuller and just a tad bit lower. So I found it interesting in the Broly movie that when Bulma makes her wish, um, that it's, or she talks about the wish that she's going to make, it's, you know, it's to be a little younger, which would in turn make her a little higher pitch. And I was like, huh, I wonder if they did that on purpose. Because that would be a really cool way to kind of like, hey, I know she sounds just a tiny bit different, but here's why. So I thought that was smart. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but I like to think they did. <laughs> what made yes. you first take an interest in acting? Oh gosh, what made me first take an interest in acting? Um, well, I was a ballerina from the time I was three until I was about 12. Um, and then I had a horrible roller skating accident. <laughs> Seriously, I was, a, I was a huge klutz. Um, and so I realized that I needed to kind of shift gears. I was not gonna be a professional ballerina. And yes, at 12, you know that. It's really sad. Um, and it all worked out for the better. I was always the kid in ballet that was loud and obnoxious and silly. Um, so I, I kind of always knew that maybe that wasn't for me, but I had invested so much time and effort into it. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. And so when that accident happened, I was like, okay, well, switching gears and at 12, you know, that's not something that you're thinking about is your whole life career. Like, what am I gonna do now? And I started thinking about the things that I enjoyed about dancing. I love music. I love uh, movement. I love performing for people. Um, I love bringing music to life, like giving it a, a, a vibe with your body and being able to communicate a story through movement. And I thought, okay, that's what I love about it. How can I take those things and move into another, you know, genre of entertainment or something that I also enjoy? So I started thinking about theater. I had done school plays and things like that. I'm like, you know what? I really enjoyed it. Like, maybe I should try that. So I, in sixth grade, started taking theater classes at my school and really quickly, like, just started getting cast. And then I auditioned for a, um, a company outside of my school. I thought I was really cool. I was 12 years old and I got hired by this touring company that did kind of like PSA shows. So like there was one called Who Says I Can't Drink about teenage alcoholism and Not Me about teenage drug use. And so I would get taken out of school and we would travel around Texas and we would perform these plays for high school kids. So I was like the coolest 12 year old on the block. So I'm like, I'm leaving school for a week so I can go perform for high school students. I thought I was so cool. 
Um, but I realized then, like, hey, this is something I really enjoy. And so I just continued all the way through high school, college, and I still continue to take classes to this day. But yeah, it really took some soul searching to be like, and I don't know why, because now I'm like, well, of course I should have been an actor. I was a ham my entire life. Like, why wouldn't I? Um, and specifically, specifically voice acting, I had never thought of that as a career. Nobody ever told me like, hey, there's this whole other job you can do as an actor and you can do it in your pajamas from your closet at home. Like, you know, all of these, I had no idea. So now I go back and try to educate young actors and be like, hey, I know you might want to do stage, you might want to do film. Don't forget about voice acting because it's not just one thing. You've got a bunch of different genres in this whole aspect of acting. So yeah, sometimes I wonder like how it took me so long to find it. But here we are. <laughs> Surprisingly, Dragon Ball continues to get more and more popular despite it being around for as long as it has. How have you and, and your castmates have been able to handle an even more popularity within a franchise that everyone already thought was like the most popular anime? It's insane. I mean, like five, ten years ago, if you say Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, or Vegeta, or Goku, there's going to be a handful of people that are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen an episode or two. Now, if you say Goku, Dragon Ball, Vegeta, people are like, oh, yeah, 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 I know, Kakarot, you know, and they'll go on about stuff. Um, even my dad, like my dad, for the longest time, had no idea what I did. When I uh, got cast as Hello Kitty in animation theater, he's like, oh, I should say he's from Spain. That's why I always do the voice, and people are like, I, so you'd be like, oh, Monica, now you are going to be rich because you are the voice of the Hello Kitty. And I'm like, that's not how this works, Dad. I don't get, like, commission every time a Hello Kitty item is sold. But when Dragon Ball, when it started coming on television and stuff, and he could watch it, he was like, Monica, you are in Las Bolas de Dragon. And I'm like, yeah. Well, the literal translation of Bolas de Dragon is uh, the balls of the dragon. So he would go around telling everybody, my daughter is in the balls of the dragon. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> but to have something that my dad could be proud of and actually knew what it was was so exciting. Like even now I can be out with him and if somebody's wearing like the orange Goku, like he's like, oh, it's the boss of the dragon. I'm like, shh, what the fuck? Mm, now I'll just call it Dragon Ball. But yeah, it's been really, really cool. The lines have gotten longer at conventions. We've gotten celebrities, like I go to a lot of Comic Cons and celebrities like geek out, like, oh my gosh, you're Bulma. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're famous actor person or uh, they'll bring their kids in which is really really cool so it's been it's been fun and I love that anime is slowly becoming more and more mainstream I think that's awesome out of um, yes. all the anime characters that you've voiced so far what's closest to your your natural personality Ooh, that's a hard one are there any that are close to my natural personality actually you know what there is there is a show that not a whole lot of people have watched, and maybe this will help that. Um, it's called Mikagura School Suite, and I play a character named Iruna Ichinomiya. It's a really hard name to say. Iruna Ichinomiya. But that character, Sunny Strait, who also plays Krillin, was the director, and uh, he watched it, and he called me and was like, hey, how's your season looking? Do you have a lot of work? And I'm like, no, oh, you know, I could take on some more work. What you got? He's like, I've got a show that is starring you. I was like, what? He's like, no, this anime character is you. I'm like, whatever. And he goes, would you be willing to do it? And I was like, yeah, totally. This is fun. Let's see what you think of me. And I got in there and I'm like, oh, she's insane. She's me. Like, she's just crazy and she'll do whatever. She'll make silly noises. She'll do weird stuff and like stand up in the middle of the classroom and make a fool out of herself. And I'm like, oh, it's 100% me. And so it was a lot of fun recording because he just kind of gave me carte blanche. He's like, do whatever you want. Just do what Monica would do. And I'm like, so that was a lot of fun. She was a blast. And the other one I'd say, even though it's kind of embarrassing to admit, there's a show called Watamote, and I play Tomoko, who suffers from severe social anxiety to the point where she does some really cringeworthy things trying to avoid certain situations. And I actually, when I was a dancer, I had crippling social anxiety. When I was on stage, I was fine, but like if my cousin came over to me and was like, hey, Monica, red, quiet, like just it could not handle it. So to me, there was something kind of cathartic about coming full circle and actually voicing a character with that condition. Cause I'm like, hey, I know what this feels like and it sucks. <laughs> so it was kind of neat to come back and be like, 
to look at it from a different angle and hopefully help somebody that might watch that show and go, oh man, I know how this feels and I don't like it and try to make it lighthearted and fun so it's not such a, a hardcore issue. Good question. In the past 10 years, how has you as a voice of actress has transformed with the franchise of Dragon Ball Z? Ooh, how have I transformed along with Bulma? Oh my goodness. So. It's been really exciting because Super, Bulma has had so much more to do, right? She's kind of inserted herself into everything. She's like, you guys aren't leaving me on Namek again. I'm not getting stuck with the kids. I wanna be in the action. So it's been cool to watch her kind of force, be more aggressive in being a part of everything. Um, also, she's taken on this maternal kind of aspect. She's always had it with the kids and with Vegeta, but now everybody, she's kind of, hey, are you okay? Is everybody all right? She's the one who's wearing the pants, whether Vegeta likes it or not. Um, and I love that everybody's terrified of her. You know what I mean? Anytime she says anything, all the Saiyans are, I love that, just because that was not the case before. And I think that her empowerment over the course of Super especially has um, kind of empowered me. Like now if you see me with those guys, I'm like, all right, Sonny, you go do this. Okay, Chris, you go over there. Sean, just, just sit there and look pretty. Okay, now you do this. You know what I mean? I've kind of taken on her vibe. I've also gotten a lot more confident and a lot stronger. Like I, sometimes her choices I think about, and I'm like, you know what? I could do that, I can make those choices. I may not have the money she has, I may not have the intelligence to create that she has, but she's such a strong, powerful woman, and I think that, especially right now in this time, that's what we need. We need to, We need girls to see these strong, powerful women that even these giant Saiyans are afraid of, so the little girls can aspire to be like Bulma, and it's okay. Empower women, empower women. Yes, exactly, and Bulma is empowered. Especially in the Burley movie, she's like, oh no, you're not leaving me. I'm going to. And then she even took them shopping. How nice of her. <laughs> Who yes. has had the biggest impact on your career? Who has had the biggest? Oh, wow. Oh gosh, there's so many. Who's had the biggest impact? Well, I would say, first of all, Matt Greenfield. Matt Greenfield is a director that I worked with at ADV very closely. We worked on so many shows together. Um, but he was the first person to cast me. So a show called Martian Successor Nadeshko, yes. way back in the day, yes. he brought me in on Walla first. And it was kind of like, um, and Walla is with all actors, which means you're basically like the background noises and people and stuff. Um, and it was kind of a test, because he was like throwing things at me to see if I could do it. Okay, now uh, you're gonna improv for three minutes and it's all about you want these aliens to go home, they're called the Jovians, go. Okay, and so I would just do it. And he goes, okay, now do the same thing, only be uh, an old British lady. Okay, now you're a little boy. Okay, now you're this, now you're that. And I'm like, oh, this is fun. Like, it's just constantly improv. Um, and he taught me along the way, like anytime I do military stuff, like especially Genlock I recently did, that is like an homage to Matt Greenfield because I've never been in the military. I've watched films, but I have no idea how to bark at people like that. And he got that out of me and taught me how to do it. Um, he pretty much taught me how to anime voice act, which is, is freaking awesome. And I'm, I'm sad that I don't get to work with him anymore because he was such a huge part of, of who I've become. Um, gosh, and there's so many more, but I would say Matt probably, Matt probably takes the cake. Yes, oh, go ahead. Um, do you have a preference between like doing a character just for a season or like you did with Bulma and growing with them over the years? I like the long lasting characters because you get so attached. Um, like right now, if you guys were to ask me like, what's Bulma's favorite vegetable? What's Bulma's favorite this? I have those answers because I've spent so much time with her thinking about her and sitting in that, that brain space of Bulma. Um, whereas, you know, some of the other characters that I've only spent 12 episodes on, I won't have as much information on them because I haven't has, had as much time to develop the character. Um, so I really love the long running ones just because you do have more time with that character. Especially in the days of simul dubs, it's really hard to get attached to some of those characters because you're only coming in for like 10 minutes a week. So it's really hard at 10 minutes a week to go, yeah, I'm invested, I'm 100% in. Whereas with the long ones, you get more time. What is Bulma's favorite vegetable? Brussels sprouts. Because I think that she would like them because they look like tiny little cabbages. So she likes cute stuff, but at the same time, they're very nutritious. They also taste like bacon, bacon if you cook them the right way. She's a meat girl. Not to plug anything Atlanta and take from this, but uh, public school 404 here for a long, long time ordered their Brussels sprouts. 
Ooh. You will make yourself and Bulma proud. Ooh, I like it. I like, I like it. it. She's like, I don't work there. It's not a plug. <laughs> have you experienced Japan before? No. You know what's crazy? I have never been. I feel like I've seen the entire country of Japan animated. Um, I could probably find my way around because I've seen it animated so many times. I know what Tokyo Tower looks like. I know certain intersections. I know certain parks, certain shrines, but I've never seen them in real life. And I think it's not, it's not because I haven't had the desire to go. I definitely do. It's more about, I have a lot of family in Spain. So if you've got money, guess where you get to go? You get to go see the family, which is great. And I love them. Lo siento, familia. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, you want to go on vacation. So if you've got a couple, a couple of K in your pocket, you want to go to Japan, and instead you got to go see grandma. So that's a little hard. Um, but now that's on my, that's on my list. That is my next place to go. And I told, like, my my best friend is not into it. She's she's much more into different areas. So she's like, I don't know if I want to go to Japan. I'm like. I'll go by myself. I don't care. I'm just gonna go. I want to see it. I and I, I've got some voice actors friends, some seiyuu friends now that I'm like, I'm gonna come out there, and they're like, Yes, we will take you to all the beers and the karaoke, and I'm like, Yes, I will do all of the beers and the karaoke. Let's do it. So I will go eventually, and I'll probably like, you know, video and take pictures the whole time and do a blog or something so everybody can see me experience Japan the first time. I would love to. How much have you enjoyed? My Hero Academia now running on Toonami to potentially be this generation's Dragon Ball. Oh, How it's so it crazy. Like, I had to order more Suyu prints this morning because I was almost out Thursday. <laughs> like, holy moly! And Bulma's doing well, too. But <laughs> you never know. Bulma and Suyu are like this constantly, which is crazy because Bulma's been around for 20 years. Suyu's been around for four, you know? But I will say that I think that it is... The storytelling is very similar to Dragon Ball in the sense that you get attached to those characters. And I love those character-driven shows because you could watch them go to the grocery store and you would be totally enthralled, right? Because you know, they're, they're kooky, they're weird, it's crazy. So I really love that about it. But I think that what's great about My Hero is the under high, underlying message of, you know, you can be whatever you want to be as long as you work hard and you're determined. Um, not only that, but I think that the creators of My Hero were very smart. Um, they've been very vocal about the fact that they didn't want to make it too Japanese, too Japanese-centric. They wanted it to appeal to a, a wider audience. So you'll notice that there isn't as much mention of like Japanese food or Japanese this, and it's because they wanted it to be able to be translated in every country and stand alone and not be just an anime. They have a bigger goal in mind. Um, and I think that's really cool because it. I think some people can get alienated if they're not familiar with anime and all of a sudden you're talking like, you're using honorifics or you're talking about certain foods and people who don't understand that are like, okay, I'm out. They're speaking Greek. I have no idea what's happening. But I do love that it has become as popular as it has because when it first came out, nobody was watching it. And we were nervous because we were like, this is such a good show. And it seems like everybody got the memo at the same time because then it, all of a sudden it was like, my hero. And I think we were the ones that were more surprised than anyone because it was like, we've been talking about this show and how great it is and nobody watched it and suddenly everybody's seen it. But I'm excited for it. I love that. I see a lot of families where, you know, the, the grandparents and the parents are like, Dragon Ball! And the kids are like, My Hero! But they're cross-pollinating. So they're watching the My Hero and they're watching the Dragon Ball and it's creating these families that just love Dragon Ball and My Hero and it's awesome. <laughs> what are you passionate about outside of performing? Ooh, what am I passionate about? Passionate about outside of performing. So many things. Um, I'm a huge animal lover. I love animals. Um, I'm big right now in women's rights um, and standing up for women because I feel like our society is not always doing a good job. It's like, look, just because you have a vagina doesn't mean you should be less of a person or treated like less of a person. Um, and I think that there's a misconception, um, and especially in the anime community, I hear this a lot from guys. Um, they use terms like feminazi and this and that, and I'm like, I don't think people understand feminism is wanting to be equal, right? Equal playing field. It's not, I want to be better than them. It's just, I want to have the same opportunities. I want to have the same rights. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do to my body without having somebody say, you can't do that. You know what I mean? Just not to get political or anything, but I want 
women to have the same rights that everybody else has. And same thing for any like minority group. Like I'm very big and talking about, you know, people of color, trans, I'm a huge trans ally. Like anytime I meet somebody who's trans, who's going through a transition, I'm like, you know, I'll give them my phone number and be like, text me when you do your name change, text me when you do this, because those are huge moments that they may not be able to share with their families. And to me, that's heartbreaking that a family would like turn someone away because they're trying to be who they really are. Um, same thing with homosexuality, like a huge ally. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm really passionate about. Um, and I feel like someday, like I might be that anime voice actress turned politician. <laughs> and everybody's gonna be like, you were in this hentai. And I'll be like, whatever. Vote for me. <laughs> yes. So, um, can you give a word of support for those who are LGBT, LGBTQ plus A and of the trans community? I do a workshop on that. As oh, an ally, cool. I recently did it in Boston. Oh, just, fun. Just for people to feel comfortable and have a safe and open space. Yes, I think that's brilliant, first of all, that you do that. Um, and I will say there is, not to plug anime or to bring it back to anime, but um, David Wald is a fantastic voice actor, but he's also a director. And he went to Sentai Filmworks and was like, I have this mission. He is a gay man and he's like, look, you guys are missing a key market here. There are a lot of LGBTQ people who want to see anime that relates to them. And there is this whole market over there that has not been brought over because everybody's a little too scared to touch it. And he's like, I tell you what, if you bring it over here, I will make it work. I will get out there. I will put the word out. I will say everything. I will do whatever I have to do to make it happen. So first of all, I would say to them, we're working on it. We're bringing stuff over. He just brought Love Stage over, which is a beautiful, it doesn't, I mean, that's what's crazy to me is that it's not even about the two main characters being in love and being men. It's just a beautiful love story. You know, they just happen to be dudes. Um, there's so many different shows that he's bringing over. But I would say to all of my LGBTQ plus A friends, uh, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I see the pain. I see the struggle daily. Um, but I think that this community has the opportunity to be the catalyst, the change, because we are all weirdos, right? We're all weirdos and it's awesome and it's glorious. You can dress up in whatever you want. You can look whatever you want. And if somebody side eyes you, it's on them, not you, right? So I feel like I really want to invite more people from that community and like, hey, come over to anime. Come see that we're not, we're not all, we're weirdos, but the great kind of weirdos, not the bad kind of weirdos. Um, and then it is such a welcoming community and they got, everybody's got arms, you know, outstretched. So I'm really hoping that maybe some of those folks will, will find solace in, in, in anime and in this environment and these people. Cause you know, everybody, every community has their bullies, but I think overall anime and, and, and even some of the gaming, but mostly anime is very inclusive and a very friendly place to be. So I hope so.